career as a development person. I was a C-sharp developer. So each day as I used to work, I used to think, uh, what is the purpose of my job? Where am I creating an impact? Am I touching people and or am I cover, covering people of all kinds of, uh, in, with all kinds of abilities? And what part of my life is dedicated to people? So as I was exploring this aspect of uh, software development, so this is where my interest came from. So in 2020, I attended a talk on accessibility testing. And from there, I have been uh, reading every day something or the other pertaining to accessibility. So today, my talk, Accessible Much, is a very beginner friendly talk. It won't deep dive into aspects, but it's still at that stage where it's creating an awareness to people why accessibility is a concern or it's, a, it's important for your product or why you should think about accessibility. So when you think about accessibility, do you, or when you develop a product or a world-class solution, do you ask yourself, is my app application accessible much? So is a blind person able to access my website? Or is an old person in my house able to uh, access it seamlessly? Or am I, am I giving a great customer experience? Ultimately, we would be just focusing on customer experience. Customer is the king. Everybody considers their customer. So this is one area that I, I'm, I'll be focusing on. So, so what's accessibility? Basically, people confuse between accessibility and usability, if, you, if, you, if you've ever seen. So accessibility is that if I have a water bottle on a table, I'm standing at a distance. So is this accessible now? No. If I go and touch this, this will definitely be accessible, isn't it? So in the same way, when I develop an application, is it accessible to everybody? I'm working on a website. Will my mother be able to access it easily or seamlessly or my brother or, an, or my grandmother? So that's the basic thing. So accessibility is nothing but the fact of being able to reach something very easily and in a very easy, easy manner. So if you see this Venn diagram, uh, when, if you're planning for a trip, okay, and uh, you are using Google Maps for it, and suppose your location is not traceable, and you, you are getting that frustrating experience where you are thinking, what, what is my app doing? I mean, I'm, it's not accessible, and you're go going into that negative zone or a negative vibe that you're kind of experiencing. So basically, solutions or products that you develop should be seamlessly accessible to everybody. And uh, it's also called as alley. And why that 11 is, if you count the number of letters between A and Y, it's 11. These are numeronyms. Similarly, you'll have observability and many other terms in the same kind of, uh, same kind of words. And then this is a very famous quote by Tim Berners-Lee in context to World Wide Web. So if you see, he says that the power of the web is in its universality. Basically, everybody should be able to access your application universally. And access by everyone, regardless of disability, is an essential aspect. We talk accessibility only in terms of disability or physically challenged people. But even if I don't have any kind of disability, if I'm not able to access, for example, government sites, especially in India, give a very t disappointing experience. Your EPFO site, I hate the experience which I get with that site, at least. And I'm like, who has developed this site? I will develop this site. So that is, that's the context. And then if you see this picture, I don't have any kind of disability. I will be able to walk on any kind of path given at any given point of time at this age. As I grow older or anybody is, is of an older age, if they have to take the ramp, they will not be able to take it, right? It will be very difficult for them. And if you see those steps, at least steps, they will stop. They will get certain amount of, uh, I mean, certain amount of people who have asthma. My father has asthma. He will face a difficult time even going through the steps, but he will stop and go. It's not the same with the ramp, if you see. And similarly, the second place also, it's the same case. So the curb effect. The curb effect is nothing but, basically, you think uh, accessibility is only for the disabled people, curbing a certain section or a certain class of people. So this curb effect says that, Accessibility is not only for the disabled or only for the older generations or only for a certain section of people with any kind of disability. It's for every section of the people. You name it, you should, you should have everything as a part of your solution. So similarly, if you see these images, th these are cases of, these are three cases where in the first image, you will be seeing a case of inequality. The shortest person, I am short, if I would be in that place, 
I would also not be able to see it, and I would be cursing everybody there. And the second thing, I have the boxes, but still, it's an added effort, okay? Equality. And the third case is a case of accessibility. Through the net, everybody will be able to see whatever your height, whatever your personality. So this is one example. And inclusive design. So Microsoft has been always advocating for on the concepts of inclusive design. So whenever you develop your solutions, everybody should be able to uh, use it. And the future is for those people who build inclusive products. And basically, you should make, a, make the world a better place to live in. How would you do it? You should be empathetic. And if, if you understand somebody who is going through the same kind of problem, you will include that concept of inclusive design. So this is, this is that concept. And basically, whatever you see here is the different kinds of disabilities. People who have seeing disabilities, vision related, or hearing disabilities, or speaking related disabilities. So there are many other disabilities. So I've covered this. And then what's digital accessibility? Again, most solutions that we use are either websites, or mobile apps, or APIs, or IoT-based applications, or anything. So basically, your accessibility solution should be digital and should be universal and versatile. And whom should this be accessible by? I consider limited geographies. Sorry if I'm ignoring anybody. But basically, the first thing is the students in Nigeria. If you see, Nigeria is a very developing country. And still, they have a lot of issues related to education, or food, or basic living standards, or living styles. So the first thing is students in Nigeria I've considered that the, these children should be able to access whatever applications that we commonly access. And the second thing is, a blind person in California, I've taken California as an example, has lost his vision. It could be complete vision, or it could be partial vision, or it, he could be colorblind. Some people see different kind of colors when you see on the screen. If, you come, if, you, if you're in the sun, and if you come inside, I see a black screen usually. So most people would see a black screen, isn't it? So a senior citizen in India, when I took this example, I remembered my 90-year-old grandmother who's in my house. She does not access things, but then she, she would love to know about things. Like when I do Google Pay every day, she asks me, how do you do Google Pay? Why, what is Google Pay? Can I access? Can you teach me? So this was the reason that I took these examples. And this is a word cloud. So basically, when you want to know about something, you should get acquainted with the terms. If you're learning language, I was in Bangalore in 2014. I'm a Telugu speaking person, so I didn't know what, what, how to interact with. I should know the terminology, basically. I bought a book, Learn Kannada in 21 Days. That didn't work because I didn't know the terminology itself. So get acquainted with the terminology. So these are some of the terms that can be used in context of accessibility. So assistive technology is one, and uh, guidelines, Ali, usability. So you can have a look at this later. And then similarly, these are the most commonly used ones. So WAVE. WAVE is a tool which is used for accessibility, the most common one. It's a free, it's a free tool. Anybody can use this. It's like a browser extension. And the next thing is ALI, as I told, accessibility or ALI, most commonly used terminology. And WCAG, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. And similarly, there are many other things. And ARIA is also another important thing that you need to keep into consideration. So what are the characteristics that I'm considering for this, uh, this here? So first one is visu visual. So we, we need a vision. Vision is a very important aspect. Uh, most we ignore it at many phases. But as we grow old, you, 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 for me, if I don't have these glasses, I can't see people who are at a far, farther distance. I have short sight. So this glasses is making it very accessible for me, isn't it? So vision could be low vision or complete vision or color blindness again. And auditory is deafness or completely losing your hearing capacity. And motor is uh, arthritis, very commonly seen among many young people also these days. And then cognitive is learning disabilities. If any of you have seen the movie Tare Zameen Par, Indian context, so you would have seen that guy uh, suffering with dyslexia. So dyslexia is one such problem that you could associate to. So why do we need accessibility? Most people ignore accessibility. When you test an application, when you develop an application, people don't think beyond functionality. 
we only we only think even in a hackathon ka finding functional bugs or usability or ux related bugs is important we don't even think the after we don't even go to one extra layer performance no security no not at all i don't even want to see that aspect so why do we need accessibility basically accessibility comes into picture when you have empathy towards the person you are working with i am developing an application i am developing it for blind people so these people should ultimately benefit from my development and these people should be able to use it seamlessly so if you have that empathetic factor so that is where accessibility comes into place and then uh, united nations uh, for like for many things it defines rules and regulations it also says that uh, accessible accessing the web is a human right and also there are many laws although in india it's recently gaining popularity us and uk have been much advanced in terms of accessibility and then i'm sorry this image is not so clear but then uh, this is stephen hawkings and he had ha he has a motor neuron disease so people with accessible uh, i mean uh, problems related to disabilities or something like that have uh, various challenges in doing day to day works like for example they would not be doing it in the way we do or they would require a family person a family's assistance or a caretaker or a maid or somebody who could help for stephen hawking although he had motor neuron disease life became much easier because he had lot of assistive aids and he didn't face the kind of challenges but it's not the same for everybody isn't it you need certain if i get a small hurt on my leg i am so dependent on my mom that i said please do this for me so it's not an easy easy thing so this is one thing and also if you see 61 million people in the us that that's like that's like a huge figure have different kinds of disabilities i cannot say this is one area that they have so and also in europe this is a huge problem too then why do you consider accessibility it's also a civil right uh, i'm taking an exam i'm taking certain examples here so target was one company uh, which was uh, which had to pay a huge fine because of the uh, the problems in their site so basically the national federation of blind had raised a case against target because their site was inaccessible for the blind people especially so this was one typical pay case and they had to pay a fine of 6 million dollars so just imagine for a single small thing you are neglecting how much amount of fine you have to pay and netflix everybody loves netflix i watch it throughout the day so this is another uh, so a deaf person had tried to access netflix's site and similar problems like the caption does not match in mo most of the times also when you're watching netflix you see this closed captioning uh, there is no sync between what that person is speaking the some somewhere in, in the down uh, in the bottom part you see that chuckling where is that person chuckling i don't find him chuckling how is the how is the sync matching so there was a similar issue like that and they had to pay a huge fine to 755 755000 the next thing is dominos who doesn't like dominos everybody loves it right so dominos was on the case and here again uh, a blind person was not able to access their mobile app or neither their website so either they should have had one option if they could not access website they should have been given that provision of a mobile app so this was another case so there are many cases like this coles is another client who had to pay a huge amount of fine so the different laws or regulations so the most popular one united states uh, section 508 so this is pertaining to federal agencies electronic and information technologies so this is one established law also they have the americans with disability act which is called as ada which is very famous and in india so now now comes the question of india the right for persons with disabilities act 2016 so if you really want to know something about this please please read through this and you name it united kingdom australia canada every geography has their own kind of laws so we are also in that i'm glad to see india's name also so <laughs> that's another thing so why is digital standard required to assess accessibility so you had to measure something you don't have any kind of metric how would you measure if you had to test something without requirements you still could test because you have michael bolton's qa hiccups history image and all that so how do you measure how do you check for how do you assess accessibility so you have different kind of guidelines and these are provided by the world wide web consortium 
the same firm or the same body that designs rules for HTML, CSS, on other web-based technologies. So basically, there are uh, different kind of guidelines specified for this. And each uh, they have different number of guidelines for each level and with different kinds of checkpoints. So these are the common ones. And uh, the first uh, kind of a guideline came in 2008, which is the 2.0 version. And similarly, the 2.1 version was in 18, 10 years much later. And 2.2 is to be published in 2021, but in 22, this was updated. So this is one thing. And uh, so what are the common accessibility failures? So you know, when you test an application, you can identify what are the common functionality bugs or what are the common usability bugs. Similarly, what are the common accessibility failures? Most of the, if you see, most of the bugs are due to low contrast text. When you see something from a far, farther distance, if it's not clear, the background image and the foreground image is not matching. So it doesn't make sense to you, no, right? So the similar thing, so low contrast issues are the highest causes for failures and the, the least percentage being for missing document language. And this is a survey that is conducted by WebAIM. WebAIM is a project, a web accessibility project. And they, every year, they conduct surveys on sites for accessibility. And they pull out the factors and what are the different reasons. So assistive technology. So most of our users here that we target, although are different groups, so mostly people with challenges or some certain kinds of impairments. So assistive technology is something that will help or aid these kinds of people with various kinds of disabilities. So basically, I'm, uh, I'm taking the example of a screen reader. Screen reader basically helps you to understand what is there on your website. It has a voice-enabled speech, uh, speech technique where it tells you're on google.com, you're clicking, this is a button, this is a, this is a drop-down, or it basically helps everybody understand what is the kind of uh, tool or the device that you're using. And then screen magnification software. People would think this is similar to Zoom. No. Zoom, you zoom into a particular area, and screen magnification software is it's zooming entirely, the full screen. And this is an alternative input device. So based on your movement, there is a mouse movement, or whatever movement you're doing, it pushes that, it pushes that wheel, and then with the help of that, it aids that person. So this is another typical device. And then this is the Chromeworks demo. So. So this is basically a screen reader. It's, a, it's an extension particularly for Chrome. You have a Firefox extension also, Firefox. So this is a kind of a screen reader extension. So I'm adding this to Chrome. So basically, this is the way it assists a user. Yeah. So this is how we uh, use a screen reader. Okay. Okay, this is a screen reader, so it basically assists, it tells what kind of controls you're using. And every browser has its own, own extension now. And basically, I've used Chrome because Chrome is the more easiest browser, although Edge, Edge is giving a similar kind of experience. So, assistive, as I already told you, uh, impaired users or challenge, uh, people with challenges need assistive technology to assist them. So how does it basically work? So you have a web browser and an accessibility API. And here I'm considering the example of a screen reader. 
Web browser is the area where you're performing your interactions or you're operating the site. And this accessibility API is an intermediary or it's like a, acting like a broker and it's con converting the instructions in a format that is convenient with the screen reader. And this screen reader will now assess the challenge, the, visual, the blind person or whoever is using it. So basically what's an accessibility API? Uh, as I already told, it's, com it's communicating information uh, about user interfaces to assistive technologies. And what does it store? It stores different information related to your role or name or what kind of thing you're using or what is changing. So you don't perform, every user does not perform the same kind of actions. I may drag, you may click, or somebody else may do some, some other interaction based on his context. So this is what the accessibility API does. And another important thing is ARIA. So when you talk about accessibility, ARIA labels are very important when you, re when you are working with web-based technologies like HTML, CSS. ARIA is something that you need to take care of. So ARIA is nothing but the accessible, rich internet application. It's a kind of specification. If, you, if you're even working with automation, that's for the testers, you would have observed your DOM, the document object model. You would have seen interactions as to how, your, how, your, how things are changing. If you're clicking something, if you're clicking a checkbox, initially it's disabled. If you're clicking it checked, so the property or things change in the DOM. So that is what ARIA helps you with. And it enhances your application, basically. So it's like an add-on. And ARIA is one thing that has to be definitely ta uh, taken care of. So this example, if you see, the left side. Now, this is closer. But if you see from a farther distance, the left side of the image is pretty dull. And I wouldn't like to have such an uh, interaction. And the right side, OK, the right side is a bit better. So it's a bit darker, and it's legible. So basically, uh, as I told you earlier, we have something called as the WCAG guidelines, which is the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. So they have three levels, which is level A, AA, and AAA. So every website has to adhere to level AA. So as per those guidelines, they have defined a criteria for success. So if for contrast levels, the success criterion is 1.4.3 as per level AA, so whenever you develop something, it has to adhere to those. Or else, when you're uh, using some tools like Wave, uh, it clearly shows you that you have failed on those aspects. And uh, you need to maintain those levels to get, get an accessibility check for your site. So accessibility in SDLC. So uh, I mean, we think accessibility only comes at the end or only comes in a particular phase, basically. And uh, if you see, accessibility comes at every stage, basically from the time your product prototype has been made. So initially, f uh, from, the, from the time your wireframe has been created, and then it goes into your product backlog, and your sprint, uh, sprint backlog, developers and testers, and until the time you deliver a shippable product, or the end product is given, accessibility comes in every phase. You cannot ignore accessibility. So uh, this, is, uh, this is from DQ. And if somebody wants to learn about accessibility, dq.com is a brilliant site. They have content for developers, testers, designers, you name it, they have it. And it's very, very, they have free and paid content also. They have specific training programs if you really want to learn. So, so accessibility adds quality. So, so basically, uh, whenever a story comes for testing, OK, what do you do? Uh, basically, you do a certain amount of functional testing without any kind of tools. You explore the application, then you do exploratory, then you do automation, and then you do ma then you do it manually or with different kinds of tools. So, in in terms of accessibility, you can use different screen readers or voiceover devices, and for different kinds of browsers. Although IE is deprecated now, uh, when there was IE, you could use JAWS, or for Firefox, you could use NVDA, which is a kind of screen reader. And what uh, what impact is accessibility create when it's added. So basically, it enhances your quality. It gains that confidence from your customer or client whom you're working with. And it also boosts your brand. And as I told you, there are huge fines. So you don't want to get into that part and create problems to yourself or for your organization, isn't it? So the different types of tools that you could use. First is human assistance. because This is the simplest and the easiest way. We don't want to be excessively dependent on tools, okay? Because 
tools, we, ultimately, whether it's tools or anything, for any person, thinking is the most important element. So you want to rely on yourself mostly. So for, this is the most common thing, keyboard. I, I can use a mouse very easily. I feel I'm too excessively dependent on a mouse. But for a person who's blind, he would not, he, he does not want to interact with it. He feels easier with keyboard. He can feel it and he can sense it. So these are the different keyboard combinations, control L, tab or shift and tab combinations and space bar and different kinds of screen readers or voiceover controls. So these are the different things for, for Mac, for IE and these are different kinds of screen readers if you can see. And then the semi-automated. A little bit I will do, a little bit I'll rely on the tool. So the semi-automated part, don't go by the image, I used literal axe means axe. So it's not, it doesn't cut, but axe is a very good uh, capability. So you can use axe for, axe for one of your semi-automated tool combinations. This is a great tool, this is also by DQ. And Wave is another very easy to use application. I will show you a demo with Wave and Google Lighthouse. So just as you use developer tools, you, will, you can easily get accessibility reports through Google Lighthouse, not only for accessibility, uh, performance, security, or any other area that you'd like to target. So Google Lighthouse is a great tool. And now the automated flavor, I'm not deep diving, but I will tell my experience with this. So for, we have been uh, really using Selenium. We have not uh, gone beyond Selenium for any kinds of automation. So I've been using the Axe Selenium core flavor. So you have everything. For the CLI part, you have Axe CLI. This is an Axe core library, which is available in various flavors. The Jest Axe, Cypress Axe, or the WebDriver IO, or the Test Cafe. This is also a great uh, offering by DQ again. So anything related to accessibility, in India especially, DQ is doing a great job. So you should talk to those people, and they will give you everything. So when I began, it, I didn't even have the basic understanding. So this website has helped me immensely to self-educate myself. So now the web accessibility part. So I'm here covering web because uh, if I take everything, it's a large gamut. And mostly, I work with website-based applications. So the web accessibility is what I'm taking into consideration. So if you see web accessibility part, uh, we see mostly images without alt text, OK? When you're posting a tweet or when you're putting a post on LinkedIn, OK, people just post images without any kind of description. Uh, it really irritates. What is the context? You understand your context. I don't understand your context. And you can, you, you can give an a description for your image. And that's nothing but your alt text, OK? And alt text also helps different kinds of people understand your context without getting misguided. Uh, it doesn't create that rift. And also now there are various tools. If any of you know Caption Clerk, Caption Clerk is a great site, great kind of offering. It, it hints you that you have not used alt text for this. So it's a, it's a good way to use it. So the next thing is, similarly, uh, like alt text is uh, an image without alt text. Sometimes, they, although you have put alt text, it shows it's null, or it's non-empty, or it's not uh, visible. So that's another concern. And then link, links with no link text. Sometimes your links don't make any sense. So link text is a must for your links. And similarly, font sizes on all, uh, now this is also not a really good font size. For me, it's very convenient. For you, it may not be. So whenever you uh, put some font sizes, just keep in mind that everybody should be able to see. I'm having glasses I'm seeing. Now if I take out, I will be still searching for things over the web. So and distracting colors. I like a color, you like a color. It's not about you, it's not about me. It's about everybody. Some people like too bright colors. Too much of red, too much of green, too much of blue, no. I want visually appealing things. I want it to be a very pleasant experience when I look into my site. So even after all this, web accessibility guidelines are turning 10. But still, you can see that 10% of the sites are still not even accessible. So this is another thing. And uh, internet is still unavailable to blind users. Same concerns. So this is, and disabled people ha don't have a good shopping experience even now. Uh, for example, uh, in, in the place I stay, there is this uh, so, uh, association for physically handicapped, okay, where I volunteer. 
So they, uh, they have certain requirements, so they were shopping one day and they could not. Uh, even Despite having assistive technologies, it was a very hard experience for them. When we contacted, they said they would take care of the uh, issue. But even till date, it's not solved, it's a pain. Nobody addresses these kind of issues. So yeah, we don't talk about accessibility and that's a pain. So what are the benefits of uh, having accessibility in place? Okay, first thing, accessible websites are easier to use if you see. And yeah, your user satisfaction or your client base increases with the experience. Word of mouth, if I've used this site, oh, it's a great experience, please use it too. You will have a mind-blowing experience. I tell it to my friend, my friend tells it to somebody, and one turns to three, three turns to five, so it's a great experience. And, sorry, uh, SEO ranking. Usually when you develop a site or a product, you would want to be traceable by somebody. If I'm searching for something, keywords or headlines or whatever you use, so having accessibility in place will give you a good SEO ranking and legal complications again. And your com a company's branding doesn't need any additional effort, no marketing costs and all these. So basically it's a very good experience. And then the common alley bugs. So if you are checking for functionality, you know what kind of bugs come under functionality. New persons, this is a new area, how would you know what kind of a bug is this? You would still put it under usability or you would put it under UX. Oh, for me this is a functionality, no. You should be knowing what kind of bug it is. So the common kinds of bugs, the zoom 200%, change your zoom level when you are accessing an application from 100% or whatever the zoom percentage is and see the effect, see the impact, compare both, see how the appearance looks. I'm sure at 200% the site would be terrible for some applications. So that's not that's one thing that you could see. And again, I told you ARIA label is very, very important. That cannot be ignored. And the alt text and screen reader. And sometimes, all those screen readers aid the process. There is no sync between your keyboard and screen reader. What you, the translation it provides may not be uh, perfect. And you feel, what is the screen reader doing? It's not serving my purpose at that particular point of time. So definitely you, would, you, want, you have these kind of issues. So that's a bug too. You can keep quiet. So again, the keyboard navigations also don't work on some sites. So recently I've used Marks and Spencer for a shopping experience. And I've, I've, tri I've been trying for a demo using that and it didn't work properly. So that is one area that I noticed. And bug advocacy, do you advocate for your bugs? And how do you advocate for your bugs? So as testers, we, we, bug advocacy plays a very important role. When you're advocating for your bugs, what is the kind of information that you would like to produce? So when you are advocating for an accessibility bug, what's the type of accessibility? Here I'm using a website, so it's a, it, it, the type of accessibility is web accessibility issue. And what's the impact? Most testers don't write what impact it causes. Okay, this is not working. Expected actual screenshot done, close. This is, this is the kind of bug reporting they do. So whenever you give a bug report, please include the impact, what it provides. And impact gives a lot of different impression. What percentage of users are affected? How, what, cause of, what loss of revenue is it causing to your product? So these kinds of information add a greater value. As a founder or as a, as, as a person using this product, definitely, if I'm a developer, I would not fix the issue if you don't give these kind of an information, isn't it? So this is one thing and what kind of tool you have used. So I told human assistance, semi-automated or automated. So which of these areas your tools for, for, fall under? If it's human assistance, very easily correctable. So like that. And what alternative are you suggesting to this? And which standard does it not follow? So usually when your sites or applications are built, it has to conform to 2.1, at least till now. And in 2022, uh, as uh, VCAG 2.2 guidelines were released, now the minimum mandatory is 2.2 level. So that's the level. And what's the expected behavior as usual? So certain companies that have been following accessibility or have taken accessibility very seriously. So this is a, a particular example. Sorry, this is my favorite brand. I, <laughs> I love McDonald's. And I, in the time of pandemic, they have in, included a packaging solution most people have hands or finger related disabilities also. They cannot hold things properly. So this is a kind of packaging solution where you place your chin and it opens up and the person can easily eat the burger very easily without taking people's assistance. So this is EatQual for its specially able customers. And this is my favorite shoe brand. I will 
always 100% vouch for Nike. I will, I'll, I'll definitely promote. So this person that you see, he has a problem of cerebral palsy. Okay, he cannot bend down and tie the laces of his shoes. So he needed assistance every day. It was getting very tiring for him. So uh, they, he wrote to he wrote to this athletic brand, and they have developed a shoe in such a way that he puts his leg and the shoe the back part of the shoe expands, and he put and he can easily just put a sticker kind of a thing. It does not require much effort to just put a sticker to your shoe rather than tying laces. So this is one example. So these are and like this, there are many brands who are now caring for accessibility as a requirement. So certain misconceptions. Just like testing or quality has misconceptions, accessibility also has misconceptions. And so, so debunking these myths, mostly people think anything new that comes, time consuming, expensive. So this is one thing. And if you're embedding at the beginning, like testing, people are telling start testing early in your cycle. So similarly, when you embed accessibility as a requirement from the beginning, so it's not so expensive. And also it's a revenue, added revenue. So. The second thing, accessibility testing is the responsibility of a tester. Really, quality is a team's responsibility, so accessibility also should be. And there are many experts or specialists in this field. We don't ignore them, but ultimately everybody should focus on it. So automated accessibility testing is enough. Everybody has this. Everybody has this mad race where you say, I want automation, automation, nobody thinks. But automated accessibility alone does not give you that. And then it's hard. Anything new, change is the only thing that's constant in life. You need to adapt to change. And being compliant does not mean that you have a great product which is accessible. And when you start early and often and get interacted with different kinds of teams, as testing team, UX, sales, marketing, Everybody, just work with everybody and talk to your whole team. When can you start? The earlier the better. Now, in fact, if you can ch ch check any site which is accessible, it's, it's a great addition. And it'll take time. Yeah, you can't solve all problems. One thing at a time, one percentage improvement is also an improvement. So yeah, these are some of the resources that I've used. And uh, Inclusive Design for a Digital World is a very great book. Uh, I recommend everybody who wants to get into accessibility to read this. It takes a village, as, as they say, uh, a mother ki puts in a lot of effort to bring up a child, or a father, uh, parents put up a lot of effort. So similarly, it takes a good amount of community to get a great product. So, and one other thing is uh, the Test Automation University, if you want to get started with automated accessibility. It's a great course by Mary Drake. I recommend everybody to do it. And Jerry Weinberg has been my inspiration. So Jerry Weinberg says, all disabilities that exist are created by people, and it's not disability alone. So basically, all problems are people's problems. All the best. And to everybody start getting started with accessibility testing, this is the beginning. Yeah, and I will also show very quickly a very small demo. Uh, will not take much time. So this is using the axe tool. So this is the government side difficulty, which I was talking about, if you could relate to. So this is the National Government Services Portal. <laughs> yeah, using axe dev, axe dev tools. So look at the issues that it's pointing and the different categories. So basically, it shows the issue description. If you're a newbie, what kind of issue it is. And where is it showing up on the UI? And the description, the location in the DOM, if you're an automator or a developer. And how do you need to fix this? If you don't know how to fix it, you'll break your head. So DQ University, as I said, has a great repository, very deep and detailed in, uh, descriptions. <coughs> This is a great resource, please read through. So see the requirements. Sec this is for section 508 that's being used. And what's the success criteria? And how to fix the problem again? So taking another issue again. So this time it's with links. Links with same name have a similar purpose.
as in yes yes <laughs> i have done yes so you you get the response very late <laughs> uh not really very less the proportion is still less as i said people don't react so quickly okay and another small example uh that i could show is <laughs> okay and other site again so this is the national portal of india so here you are checking the color contrast of the site i am using an extension called as color contrast analyzer again in chrome extension so look at the pain points now it shows the background color and according to web content accessibility guidelines 2.1 what's the contrast ratio failing 2 to 1 see fail and what's the ratio that has to be maintained so when you changed it's passing that criteria so now it's a pass i'll show you a very funny example this is this will hardly take time this is just to understand from a blind point a person's point of view how would a site look so this is a site called food.com okay i love food so you so so do you so i have used an extension called funkify this is a simulator okay this is a fun way of learning things so uh, this has various simulators so this is blurry bianca is like how do you see a screen from the perception of a blind user so i'm starting this simulator now you see the screen very clearly and as i start just see how just see is it it's getting a little blurred so this is one fun way and i will show you another this is dyslexia danny so dyslexia danny is dyslexia is a problem where you have reading and writing problems so this is another simulator so see so just check how the text is changing so this is another simulator and uh, trembling trevor so just see the cursor is moving off so this is another fun one and the last one is tunnel toby okay just see all right yeah so with this i am open to questions and any thoughts thank you this is a this is just a token of appreciation from the side of game of testing which was delivered by neeraj kumar singh a signed book of isc degree certificate thank you so much